the laws of the universe. Since Newton, at least, people like Newton, scientists, most of us have assumed the universe is governed by unchanging laws. Even if God didn't put them down, they were there. But are the laws that we think of as universal and unchanging, are they? If they are, how, how, how do they emerge? Where do they live? How do they have their effect? Or are they, are we mistaken? Are they not universal laws, not written in stone somewhere? Are they just human constructs that are going to remain unknowable and inexplicable? And we're just sort of approximating them. On my right, Helen Beebe, Manchester Professor of Philosophy at Dertruft. Hoft, sorry. I, I never get that right. Nobel Prize winning physicist. Uh, and then to his left, uh, Laura Mersini Houghton, cosmologist, professor of physics, which was trying to discover how this universe might actually have come into being. She stumbled upon the multiverse and has caused confusion ever since. I think that's fair to say. Um, are the laws eternal features of this universe, or are they just human constructs? Uh, Helen. Obviously, one distinctive feature of laws is um, or they seem to be universal, um, or at least they're very general sorts of things. That's not just true in astrophysics or quantum mechanics. It's true in chemistry and biology. True to at least some extent, even in things like psychology and the social sciences. Um, so at least one thing that laws do is somehow encode deep and pervasive regularities in the universe. Um, but for me, from a metaphysical point of view, because I am a metaphysician, um, the really interesting and puzzling question is this. Are they just a way of encoding um, those regularities? Are they just generaliz generalizations that we formulate that happen to apply you know, always and everywhere? Um, or are they somehow things that lie behind those regularities, things that make the universe unfold um, in this orderly and regular way that it does? Uh, so, and the word law is really suggestive, right, when we talk about laws of nature. So, when we talk about the laws of the land, right, uh, don't steal people's stuff, don't go around murdering people, don't commit perjury, and so on. Um, obviously, those laws aren't just ways of encoding regularities. I mean, for one thing, they're not even regularities because people break the law all the time, as we know. Um, but more importantly, those sorts of laws are prescriptive things, right? Uh, they're things that we obey or not, as the case may be. Uh, so the word law, as applied to the laws of nature, kind of suggests that they're prescriptive as well. Um, they're somehow rules that everything abides by. But now here's the mystery, how on earth could that happen, right? That's a really s strange thing. So we know how we obey laws. Uh, you know what the rules are, um, and you kind of obey them consciously and deliberately. So you see the uh, speed limits, uh, and you look at your speedometer, and you, if, you, if you're minded to obey the traffic laws, you put your foot on the brake if you're going a bit too fast. Uh, that's definitely not what's going on when you drop your cup of coffee and it falls to the ground, um, or when subatomic particles or cannonballs or whatever they are obey the laws of physics. They don't have minds, they don't know what the laws are, they can't decide to do what the laws say or not. So, me, and I'm kind of a, 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 a Humean, so I don't like sort of deep, deeply puzzling metaphysical features of reality. Um, I find the idea that laws of nature are prescriptive kind of completely mysterious. Um, the idea that they're obeyed, that they're things that govern what happens in the universe. Because um, I just can't see a way of making really good sense of that idea. So me, I'm inclined to think that the laws just are ways of encoding the regularities. Um, and that's all they are. So... To get back to the question, which was, are the laws eternal features of the universe, or might they be human constructs? Um, well, encoding the regularities is something that we do, not me personally, some things like Gerard and Lara do. Um, so in some sense, yes, they are human constructs, but the regularities that we're encoding, they're not human constructs, they're out there independently of us. So uh, in a sense, no, they're not human constructs. So um, in classic philosopher's style, my answer to the question is yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I thought you thought I was just being funny. Yeah. <laughs> I just I want to be clear, a law would be something that cannot be disobeyed. Like if, if gravity is a law, this paper can't just ever decide not to fall. Where a regularity, it just means that it could decide not to. It just, up till now, it always has. Is that right? You have opened a massive can of worms oh, there. Sorry. Uh. sorry, sorry. <laughs> we just could just come back to that. Pretend I didn't say that. Um, Gerard. Yes, I think we should be 
modest in claiming that uh, we know how the laws of nature work and this and this and that. We are very far away from that. What we are doing in practice is all we can do is we make observations, we do it as best as we can, and then we write down the regularities that we see. And as Helen already explained much of that, uh, we, we find all the, all, all the peculiar features that, that we can attach to the objects we see to make them behave the way we see them behaving, such as the laws of gravity, uh, which are miraculous laws that tell you that things seem to attract each other. There's a, a cosmological constant that somehow seems to make things repel away from each other. And there are the marvelous laws of quantum mechanics, where in a previous discussion, we discussed whether these laws are really are what they say they are, or whether they are only our perception of what they say they are. And I, I believe the latter, that our models of nature are very much the way we perceive the laws of nature, but that reality may be a lot more complicated and not yet within sight, I think. Uh, but altogether, these things form the laws of the universe. And now there are very important questions about them. For instance, how big actually is the universe? What are the boundary conditions of the universe? Is there a boundary, con boundary at the universe or not? Does the universe split up in many other universes further away even than the farthest things we can see? All these questions one can ask but not so easily answer unless you have a model. So we are fond of making models. We use them all the time, but I claim is that my claim is that we are still very far from the truth with our models. We are just sketching the surface of the laws of nature. And um, there's also a question which is going to be asked is how permanent are these, are these laws? Do they change at all? Well, there's one important thing to remember. If you think that laws of nature depend on space and time or so, and there was one important physicist who actually thought that, that was Paul Dirac. Paul Dirac had a beautiful theory where he says the only way to explain why nature is so complicated is that it grew gradually more and more complicated. But the laws of nature during the Big Bang were very simple and then they evolved and became and, and generated large numbers just as a function of time. That you could believe, but if you believe such a thing, then you have to say, how do the laws of nature change uh, if you go from place to place or if you go from earlier to later times? How do the laws of of nature evolve. Well, the only way to handle that is to introduce a kind of field, which I'd call a scalar field, that says, if the field has this value, then the laws of nature are such and such. There may be one, there may be many of such fields. But you're making your life hell of a lot more complicated than it already is without such fields. So the first thing we should assume as humans is that the laws that we deciphered so far must be constant until further notice. Maybe we'll discover that things change. Okay, in that case, we'll have to modify our, our understanding, our laws, but these modifications will be very complicated. You'll have new fields, and then we'll have to ask, what are the equations of those fields? Once you have those equations, of, for instance, a scalar field, then you're back at square one, then the, the total combination of laws of physics is again the same everywhere, and then again, you can ask, is it really the same? And you go on for it like this forever, and you never reach an end point. So my bet is the laws of nature that we discovered so far will be the end of the line. There's no reason to assume that they depend on other fields which depend on space and time again, because if you start that alley, you'll never end. So, uh, but this is a, just a gut feeling. I may be wrong, and uh, if I'm wrong, I want people to show that to me, where I'm wrong and where it is shown that nature is more complicated than we really think. Okay, so there are laws, but our version, our models of them may be Are changing. still far from the truth, but they are closer to the truth than anything else we know about. Okay. So. Laura, what do you think? I, I agree with uh, what Gerard said, and uh, um, we, we really don't, it, it, it's a hard question, and, and uh, we, we don't understand enough about it, so whatever I say it's my thinking and, and it's speculation more than anything. But um, um, in terms of uh, the laws of nature, making reference to something eternal is reference to time. So I find that uh, difficult to follow because um, I, I think laws of nature are fundamental independently of space and time. 
On that utterly perplexing note, <laughs> um, <laughs> you please thank the people who've prevented us from falling in. Thank you.